Hey guys, Jeff here with Custom Crawlers, and today we're going to be showing how to modify a servo for continuous rotation. Now for the most part these steps are going to uh, be universal uh, in this method uh, for all servos uh, that you want to modify, but depending on the manufacturer of the servo, uh, there may be sl some slightly different steps, or the servos might look slightly different internally. Um, but the basics of this uh, will still apply all across the board. So let's get started here. So we've got our two servos. Our receiver. And the radio that we plan on using for this build. Now let's get, before we do anything else, we want to hook up the servos. Because we need to determine what channel is what and get our servos orientated correctly um, for our application. So I've just plugged in our servos here. Let's get our receiver powered up. Turn on our power. And power up our receiver. Yeah, I don't have a switch on it. So our receiver is now powered up. Now let's take and see where our servos are at. So with our application that we're going to be using these, these servos are going into a custom D11 dozer build. Um, in our dozer builds, the forward and backward stick should control the right track drive. The left and right stick should control the left track drive. Left and right is should be the left servo. Forward and backward should be the right servo. And since we have left and right, that's the left servo that's moving. And forward and backward, that's the right servo that's more moving. So we've determined that that is correct. So these are in the correct layout, left to right, for what we need. Now, to go forward, we're going to need to push to the right. Uh, currently, our servo is going the wrong direction. So when we push to the right, it should turn forward for how we're going to mount it in your unit. Uh, this one is backwards, so we're going to need to go in and reverse that. Okay, so we've gone in and reversed that. So now when we push to the right, our servo is turning forward. When we push to the left, it turns backwards. So now both of our servos, the way that they're sitting here, are correct for how we need them in the dozers, the dozer application. So let's power them back down, shut our radio back off, and let's start with our first channel. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is take off our screws and get our servo taken apart. Now when we take our servo apart, it's important to not lose any of our parts from the inside of here. Okay, we've got our servo apart, or the screws loosened up. Now let's get our cap off here. Oh, looks like we missed getting them all the way out. Okay, now let's carefully remove that cap. Now we don't want to lose any of these the screws out the back end. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take off this gear and your main gear. We need to take those off of the servo. So let's get that, I'll give that a little wiggle and remove those. Oh, our pin came out. We're going to want that to stay in place. Keep everything lined up. Now it looks like our waterproofing ring came off, so we'll get that back on there. 
our rings back on our servo. Let's set this to the side. We'll also take and our case, take the one gear and set it inside of that. Now, inside of our main gear, our output shaft, uh, there is a little plastic piece down inside of there. Now we're going to need to remove that and in order to do that you can take a small standard screwdriver and we can go sideways behind this bearing here first and we'll just give it a little twist and work around and we'll just keep rotating it little bits at a time and you should hear it clicking Okay, sometimes it takes a little bit more, but there we got our bearing. Grab it with my fingers. Bearing popped out. We'll carefully set that to the side. Now the same thing with taking that bearing out. Your center piece here, this needs to come out of place. Now there are, it does hook through, there's two pins that hold it into place. I don't know if you can see those. You can see that spot down inside of there. On either side, there's two pins. That's what holds this plastic thing into place. So we need to get this out of place. Oh, that one came out nice and easy. So we got this popped out, so that's good. We will not use this. Just set it to the side somewhere. And we're gonna get this pin out of there. Now, you could also take and grind it off. Um, I prefer to just make an attempt to knock it out so I'll grab a small a small punch and we're gonna set it on the vise and see if we can't get that punched out okay let's see if this one wants to cooperate today sometimes they don't oh boy this one no problem. Drove right out. Drove right out nice and easy. Sometimes those pins don't push out as easy as that one did. Uh, that one we lucked out. Hopefully the other side is just as nice. Um, but if they don't, if you find that that pin does not want to just knock out a place. You can also take a Dremel or a, some type of a cutoff tool and just, just cut it off because you don't need that or you don't want that on there for your continuous rotation servo. Okay, let's go ahead and get our bearing re put back into place. Got some dust and dirt on it. Okay, get that bearing put back into place. And as far as this step goes, we are done with this step. Okay, for our next step here now, now that we've got that out of there, we need to power up our radio and get this servo powered. Let's see if we can't zoom in a bit. Okay, power it up. Rehook our servo up. Okay, our servo is hooked up. Let's get our receiver powered here. And as you notice right away, when we plugged it in, we started creeping. So immediately when we started creeping. Now, uh, another thing you want to make sure that that your radio is centered before we start this. Now we can see that our servo is creeping here. It's moving. So we need to adjust the center point of the servo. And to do that, you take and you manually turn this Now, 
there is our center point on that servo. Now, it's definitely very touchy, so that may take a little bit of time for you to get. Um, but that should be our center point now. And if we go both directions, one way or the other, and as soon as we let go, our servo should stop moving. Now once you got your servo so that it's centered, next we will need to lock that potentiometer into place centered. To take some super glue or CA glue, something like that, and we're going to put some super glue, just a small dab, on either side of that potentiometer shaft to lock it into place. So let's go ahead and get some applied. Now we want to make sure that we don't get any anywhere else on here. So let's get a small amount there. and a small amount there. Now, a little definitely goes a long way, especially when you're working with CA glue or super glue. Now we're gonna set that servo to the side and not touch it and just let that set up. Okay, our servo's been sitting to the side for a little bit now, so uh, we're going to call it good. Mm, let's get our, well, first off, actually, let's, Let's double check it before we start putting things back together. Power up our radio, power up our receiver. We're all powered up. It's good, didn't move. Operates and stays, stops. And we'll take our pieces and get them put back into place here. Now let's power up our receiver and we'll double check it again. Good. Very good. Now let's get our servo case reassembled here. Double check it one more time just cause. Powered up, powered up. Servo is sitting still. And we operate and comes back to center or stops, I guess. Now we have one of our servos modified for continuous rotation. So an important thing to note, we centered this servo for a specific radio. Uh, it is possible if you set the center point of a servo with a specific radio, that if you plug that servo into a different radio, uh, it might be off from center point. You might be like one one click point to the left or to the right, you know, um, with your fine tuning. So then you just, in that case, you'd use your fine tune adjustments on your radio uh, for setting, recentering. But that's going to take care of this for today, guys. So if you have any questions on how to do this, or if you have any questions on anything custom crawlers, please send us an email at products at customcrawlers.com and we'll be happy to assist you.
be sure to subscribe to our channel for more great content through Custom Crawlers.